Hi, it's Deacon Matt again, and uh, since yesterday we talked about this, this icon that's behind me of Christ the Blessed Silence, uh, the one that, that looks like an angel here, um, I thought that uh, this week I could look at a few other icons of Christ that, uh, that I have that uh, I think are interesting and that you might find interesting. Um, and the one that I'd like to talk about today is, um, is this little one that I have here. Uh, this is actually a, um, a smaller kind of trimmed down version of a of a larger icon that's called Christ Pantocrator and uh, it's got a very interesting history uh, behind it um, I chose this one because I was looking for an icon that that just showed the face of our Lord um, I wanted one for devotional purposes that would um, just really allow me to focus on the face of Christ to be able to to look upon the face of the Lord as I was praying. Um, and I wanted one that was small so that it could be portable. I could transport it with me to, uh, to different places when I traveled. Um, and so I actually picked this one just by going to the website of one of my favorite icon suppliers and just scrolling through page after page after page after page of icons of, of Jesus. Uh, and again, I was looking for one that really showcased his face. Um, and the reason why I, I selected this one was because of the eyes. Uh, the eyes in this one just uh, just really I found to be very penetrating and I said yes that's that's the one that I want. Uh, and it was only after the fact that I found out uh, exactly what it was I had uh, I had purchased. And as I said this is kind of a um, uh, just a, a detail of a larger icon of Christ called Christ Pantocrator. And in the full icon, um, he's, he's holding a, a book of the Gospels in his left hand, and with his right hand, it's, it's being held in a position of, of blessing. Um, but a few of the interesting things about this icon, um, one of the things that people will note about it is the asymmetry that you'll see. Um, the, the left hand side of his, his face um, is quite different than the right hand side of his face. And you can even see the details in the hair are different. Uh, the hair is kind of down and loose over his shoulder on this side, whereas it's pulled back behind him there. Uh, this side of the face has a much harsher, sterner look to it, whereas this side is much, much gentler. Um, and many people have interpreted this as um, signifying the dual nature of Christ, that um, that his left side uh, is meant to to show his divinity, and that's why it's much harsher and more stern looking, whereas the right side is meant to show his humanity, which is much more gentle and approachable. Um, I personally, this is just me, not a, a theological interpretation, um, found that the asymmetry in this particular image um, really spoke to me of the humanity of Christ because, um, you know, most people's faces are not perfectly symmetrical. <laughs> and uh, and so, to me, that just made this particular icon look much more realistic and, and very human. Um, but that is the tradition, that it's meant to show the dual nature of Christ. One of the most interesting things about this particular icon, though, obviously, this is a a replica, but the original that this is um, uh, that this is recreating is housed in Saint Catherine's Monastery at Mount Sinai in Egypt, and it's actually the oldest existing icon of Christ that still survives. It dates back to the sixth century, and it's one of the few icons that survived the the period of iconoclasm that that really wreaked havoc in the eastern part of the church during the eighth century. So this one is older than that. It comes from before that. Period period uh, from uh, at least the 6th century um, and, uh, you know, making it one of the oldest um, I, um, icons of Christ. Uh, and so, subsequently, a lot of icons of Christ are actually based off of this one. Um, and the really cool thing about this that I learned when I um, was in Jerusalem um, a couple of years ago, um, I went to the Shroud of Turin Museum there in Jerusalem to learn about the, the Shroud. And I noticed when I was walking through the museum and looking at the different exhibits, there was an exhibit about this icon. And not only this icon, but many other icons in the same kind of tradition. Uh, but this icon in particular was was on the wall and it caught my eye and I went and looked at it. And modern day forensic um, uh, techniques have been able to identify over 250 points of um uh, uh, of, of congruence uh, between uh, the face on this icon of Christ and the face from the Shroud of Turin. Uh, and that leads many experts to believe that um, the original source of this icon 
um, was either the Shroud of Turin directly or, or possibly um, a relic um, called the, the Holy Napkin or the, um, uh, the Sudarium, um, which would have been the face covering um, that was also uh, there uh, as part of the burial cloths of, of Jesus. Um, or if this icon wasn't itself directly based on that, that it was based on other depictions of Christ that were based on that. Uh, because there's so many different points of congruence between this and the face that we see depicted on the shroud. Um, so, therefore, you know, following the tradition that the Shroud of Turin is the burial cloth of Jesus, and that is our Lord's image that is impressed upon the shroud, this could very well be um, very close to what our Lord would have looked like in life, making this one of the most realistic um, icons of Christ uh, that that we have. So, that just makes it even more special to me. So, this is a little icon that I use in my devotion. Again, it's one of my favorite ones. Um, it was one of my favorite icons even before um, I learned about the possible connection with the Shroud of Turin, just because of the, the intensity of, of the eyes there. But now that I know that this um, could, in fact, very well uh, be um, much like what the historical Jesus uh, looked like, it's even more special to me to be able to gaze upon the face of, of my Lord in prayer. Praise be Jesus Christ.